Hello, my name is Sarah Monaghan and I'm a former child star. I'm originally from Australia where I was in fact a former child star. I did a hundred commercials and modeling jobs before I was eight years old. I've been in several shows uh, including Sons and Daughters and Home and Away but I am best known for a sitcom in Australia which was the highest rating show at the time called Hey Dad. I left the show when it was at the very peak of its ratings. Like it was rating back in the day, it was 36. And it was legitimately not just the highest rating sitcom, but the highest rating TV show in the entire country. We were syndicated all around the world. Uh, we were fabulously popular in Germany. Like they had five box DVD sets. Australia only had three. Um, we were shown everywhere and I left when I was like two weeks before, well, I guess two months before my 16th birthday. Now, when I left the highest rating TV show in the country, a lot of people thought that I was absolutely batshit crazy for, for ditching it all. Like, why would you as a teenager who supposedly gets to do all this really cool shit is on the highest rating tv show gets to go to awards and fancy things and you know supposedly gets treated really well why would you leave the highest rating tv show in the country i mean you're probably making bank right and everybody treats you amazing so like people were like i don't get it and I get that people didn't get it because I mean, it was the eighties and the nineties. It was like 92 when I left. Um, but Australia really didn't pay that well. They still don't pay that well. Um, but like at the very height of the biggest TV show in the country, I was making 800 bucks a week. That was it. And that was before taxes. And then uh, I had to pay taxes. Uh, I didn't have an agent anymore because we'd gotten rid of them over some tax issues. Um, but my mom wanted rent and a car payment and uh, I paid my own private school fees. So there really wasn't like huge amounts of money. I mean, not, certainly not like American kids. I mean, they were making a day in per diem what I was earning a week. Now I will say, the one good thing about not making all that money that the American kids made is we could never afford drugs. I have never been to rehab. I have never like been arrested for drugs or for crazy shit because we just legit could not afford them. Which is probably a good thing. But there was a whole bunch of drugs going on in the studio, don't get me wrong. I, do, I, I wasn't doing them, but there was older people doing them and I watched the crazy shit that they went up to and I'm like I I'm why would I waste my small amount of money that I have on like putting it up your nose and acting like a dickhead um pass and there was not a lot of other former child actors or child actors in Australia I mean at the television studio I worked at there was a tv show called home and away which I ended up guest starring on um, but they were mainly older teenagers and there was one girl, Kate Ritchie, who I knew from when I was very little and we grew up, uh, but we had completely different schedules. We never really saw each other except for studio events like the Christmas party or if we had to film one of those network jingles together. Um, and it was always great when we saw each other because we were the only two kids there. So while all the adults were getting drunk and doing stupid shit, um, we would just hang out and play like normal kids. And I've since learned from my American former child star friends that, I mean, they had actual like play groups and clubs and they had their own nightclub that was just for child actors that they would all go to and hang out together, which to me sounds like, I mean, I'm kind of jealous. Like they actually had all these people to hang out with and had a actual support group for each other because being a child actor, even though people think that your life is like really cool, it's actually very lonely because you spend so much time working. Like legit, my whole life as a kid was during primary school, I worked, I had a tutor on set, I went to school a couple days a week. When we got to high school, I went to school all day, I got in a taxi and I went straight from school 
to work where we rehearsed for three hours and then I went home and did homework and then I went to bed and got up the next day and repeated the whole thing. People didn't want to hang out with you as a friend because you were never available to hang out at the mall or go ice skating or do any of the things because you were always working. And when I was 12, I got hit by a car and broke my leg and the producers on the show banned me from doing anything. Like I wasn't allowed to ice skate, I couldn't horse ride, I couldn't do anything because they were terrified I was going to get hurt. So that legit cut out my entire social life. And all the public saw was like the two or three times a year that we actually did do something cool. Like they had the People's Choice Awards and for the last two years I was on the TV show I went to the Logies, which is like the Emmys in Australia. But uh, I had never been allowed to go as a kid because it was in another city and they did not want to pay for the chaperone. So I actually didn't even get to go for like a whole bunch of the years that we were nominated for like best comedy series slash light entertainment. Um, but yeah, like people saw those couple of events and thought that my life was just like the coolest shit ever. And they didn't realize that it was actually really lonely and that all of my friends were like 40, 50 year old grown men. And I've got the dirtiest sense of humor. Like I can make a sailor blush because I grew up in a room full of grown adult men. And what people didn't know was all of those men were lovely. They were absolutely fabulous and doting and adult and took care of me, except for the one man who was another actor on the show, my TV dad, who I ended up sending to prison. Now, everyone on the show knew what was happening. They all knew that there was a pedophile on set and there was some sick fucking jokes. Like he would walk past and one of the crew members in order to protect me would say things loudly in front of him so he could sit here would say, come here little girl and sit on my lap and we'll talk about the first thing that pops up. Which is wildly inappropriate, but also fucking hilarious. Um, and you could never get away with that shit today, ever. But back in the 80s and 90s, it was funny. And I still find the amusement in it because yeah, like we all knew what was happening and it's a laugh or cry thing. Um, and they always did it so that he could hear it knowing that that was his jam and they weren't like doing it for themselves. Like it was just funny. Um, but yeah, you could never say that today. Another jam from back then that you could never use today is, uh, Hey little girl, would you like a bird lolly? Show us your dick first, mister. But there are entire websites devoted to former child actors and talking about them being has-beens and like, oh, look at this person. They used to be like so famous and now they're like washing cars or waitressing or doing some other bullshit. Um, it's so beneath them. They could have been so much more. But the thing is, you don't know what that kid went through. You don't know their life story. You don't know their struggle. You don't know if they even wanted to be an actor. Like I personally was not my choice to be an actor. I was fucking adorable as a child. I was, uh, my dad was a fashion designer. I was a model. I ended up then going into modeling and then acting and it was chosen for me. Like it, I, I didn't wake up one day and be like, mommy, mommy, I want to be an actor. Um, and most kids don't. There are very few kids that say that they want to be actors and their parents like, run out and make it a thing but most kids they don't choose it their parents choose it for them so you've got a bunch of kids who had been given a profession that they didn't choose in the first place they are forced to become adults at the age of four or six or eight or whenever it was because when you are on a set nobody treats you like a child you are a small tiny adult and you are expected to work so you have no childhood. And then you're making money, you're paying taxes, you're expected to do all of these adult things like go to events where there's people drinking and smoking and doing all this other stuff. You are expected to act like an adult at all times. Like there's no throwing tantrums. You can't have a breakdown and cry because the show must go on. A lot of stage parents are completely 
batshit crazy. They have no business having children in the first place. And now they've got kids who are adults working and they still want to micromanage their life and take all of their money. So when a kid finally gets to that age where they have a choice of, do I want to do this anymore? A lot of them, no thank you. It was a fun experience. I'm glad I did it. But it's not what I want to do as an adult. And here's the thing. If you're a normal teenager and you have a job as like, like say you served at McDonald's, nobody expects you to be a chef when you grow up right? Like if you had a paper boy, nobody thinks you're going to grow up to be a journalist. But for some reason, when you are a child actor or a model and you choose not to pursue that as an adult, people call you a has-been and a failure. They don't get that maybe you chose not to do it anymore. Maybe you had reached your pinnacle and you've recognized, I've done everything I wanted to do and now I choose to seek new and exciting adventures that I want to do as an adult, not something that's been chosen for me. And in the 80s and 90s, even if a kid wanted to become an adult actor, it was really hard to transition. Like if you weren't adorable or cute or you weren't continuously working through those teenage years, a lot of the times you just, you didn't transition into adulthood. And now kids are doing a much better job of going from young to old but back then, I mean, it was like Jodie Foster and Ron Howard. And there was like very few people that transitioned well from child to adult. And even then, a lot of them didn't necessarily stay in front of the camera. A lot of child actors stayed in the industry, but they became producers or directors or worked in the art department. Uh, one person became an entertainment lawyer. So like a lot of us are still in the industry, but you just don't see us on camera anymore. And Australia has a thing called tall poppy syndrome, which is basically anytime anyone is above you in station in life, they like to cut you down. Um, and so as a child actor on the highest rating TV show, people could be real fucking assholes. Like people were rude and they would like just be dicks for absolutely no reason other than the fact that you were famous. And then when I left acting, and nobody knew why I left. Like, I get it. Like, they didn't understand that I left the show because I didn't enjoy being molested on set. Um, but people were mean. And I remember, like, I had, I worked in several industries and I kind of like liked people. And waitressing's really easy, right? So I was a waitress. And I remember people would just say things like, didn't you used to be an actress? Because like most people go from waitressing to acting and you went the other way. And like bartending's fine too, uh, but for the most part I ended up working in kitchens because I didn't really have to deal with the public and it's creative and I enjoy making food. And that led to really cool things. Like I worked on a super yacht as a chef. Um, but like if you see someone that used to be an actor, you don't need to point out that they used to be an actor and now they're a nobody. Because number one, they fucking know that they were an actor and that like they're not anymore. And number two, they're not a nobody. I mean, they are still that person that they were as a kid. They're just no longer doing it as an adult. And most people who like make shit, like, you know, like make fun of you that you are a has-been, are truly just jealous because they are a never was because I did more before I turned the 16 than what any of those people who made fun of me have done in their entire life and that's fine um and I used to feel really bad when people would call me a has-been but it's like you know what I've lived in three countries and I've met some incredible people and I've done cool things and I literally have a legacy that will live on forever and these people are just jealous. And so it doesn't bother me anymore when someone calls me a husband because I know it's not about me, it's about them. And that's fine. So next time you see anybody who used to be an actor, especially if you liked them, you don't need to point out that they were a husband. Just be kind to them. Say, I really enjoyed you on whatever it was that they did. And leave it at that. Don't ask them if they're working now, maybe they are maybe they're doing something and like there's like 800 fucking television stations in the u.s they could 
well be working and you just don't know about it. Um, or maybe they have a YouTube channel. You know, maybe that's what brings them joy. Or maybe they retired. Like American kids, some of them have like such good residual setups that they like never have to work again. And why would you if you don't have to? So if you're another child actor and you're watching this and someone calls you a husband, just remember it's not about you. It's them. They're jealous. <sighs> But that's my shrimp tales for the day. Let me know if you have any questions about my past or about the past of any other child actors. I know a bunch of them. So maybe I'll do an interview with them and ask the questions that you wanna ask. But yeah, be kind. We've all got our own reasons for what we did in life and what we're no longer doing in life. And it's really not anyone else's business unless we choose to tell you. But just assume that people are where they are because they wanna be there. Bye, y'all.